Hi. I just finished rereading The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins just in time for the movie release. This video will be both a book review because I haven't done one yet and I will be talking about my movie expectations. So if you're one of those people who hasn't read The Hunger Games yet, you must be going crazy right now because it is everywhere and you've probably had a couple of friends who've told you that you should read this book. Plus the whole internet is kind of going psycho. I know, just don't give up on it yet and keep watching. I read The Hunger Games for the first time in either 2008 or 2009. I'm not quite sure how I found out about it. I might have just picked it up because it looked cool because I had this really awesome paperback version with a big H and G on it and that was cut out and then behind it there was a kind of design your own cover so you could flip the cover and pick your favorite tribute. And I remember that this book just kind of blew my mind. It must have been one of the first young adult dystopian books I ever read. So for those of you who don't know yet, this is what the book is about. America has kind of been destroyed. There is now a capital where all the rich people live their fabulous lives and then there are 12 districts and all these districts produce different things. And the story is about Katniss who lives in district 12 which is the minor district. They are really poor. She has to take care of her mother and her little sister. Now the title of the book is of course The Hunger Games and The Hunger Games is a yearly event in which one girl and one boy from each district get chosen kind of randomly to compete in The Hunger Games. They get put into this arena and only one can survive. And this is all kind of done in a reality TV way and the capital just loves it. The book starts on the day of the reaping, which is the day that the children get selected, and unfortunately Katniss's younger sister, Primrose, who is only 12, gets selected. Katniss doesn't hesitate to volunteer to appear as a tribute instead of her sister, and that is how everything gets started. One of the reasons why I really like this book is that it is super fast paced. I feel like the writing is very compact and it means you can read this book in a day or two. Katniss is a very strong female protagonist. You're in her head all the time and I think she is a very pleasant character to kind of explore. It's refreshing. She's very determined. Sometimes she's a little bit oblivious, but you know. There's so many aspects of this book that I really enjoy. There's one scene in particular that always grabs me, which is kind of an unexpected one. It's basically when Peta and Katniss are on the train to the capital. Peta is the boy tribute, by the way. They have this fabulous meal and Katniss is so used to just starving all the time and she has this mug of hot chocolate and she takes pieces of bread and dips it into the hot chocolate and that whole experience, how much she is kind of amazed by it, I guess, really puts into perspective the way she has kind of lived her entire life. All the characters in this book really stand out. They have a very distinct personality and kind of look to them. I specifically enjoy the relationship between Katniss and Haymitch. Their relationship is just very kind of sarcastic and snarky and wonderful. I think that everything that takes place in District 12 kind of has a medieval vibe to it, which I really like. And parts in the arena really reminded me of the book by Gary Paulson called Hatchet, which I read when I was about 10 or 9. The way that the hunting is described in the book and just all the food that she has like roasting above the fire and sleeping outside, all these things felt very similar to the descriptions in Hatchet, which, you know, is a good thing. And of course, besides all the action and the characters, there's the whole thing about reality TV and the capital versus the districts and kind of how we are the people who are living in this kind of extravagant, unnecessary way. So yes, conclusion, even if you're sick of hearing everyone talk about The Hunger Games, please read it, because if you haven't read it, I think you're really missing out on something. Now I want to talk about the movie for a bit. I'm seeing it tomorrow night with my younger brothers. I am just so excited. I wasn't that excited before and then I reread the book and now I just can't wait. Because of some of the trailers and the clips I'm already used to all of the actors who are playing the main characters and I, I think I like most of them. I'm very much looking forward to all the training montages as you know because that's always my favorite part of any movie. I have a couple of concerns of things that can go wrong. Number one is Rue's death scene which is always kind of a sensitive topic. There's this video on YouTube where people have kind of reenacted that whole scene. I'll link it in the description, which I think is excellent. So I'm very curious to see how they handle it in the movie. And then of course there's the costumes, the costumes of the people who live in the capital. I wonder if they're going to be outrageous enough or if they're going to look super weird. And then of course all the outfits that have been designed by Cinna, the outfit that's on fire. <laughs> I really hope that they can do all of that justice. And then the final thing that could go wrong, I'm kind of worried about the mutations, all the different animals, especially the kind of wolf-like creatures at the end. So yeah, I am keeping my fingers crossed. You can let me know in the comments if you've read The Hunger Games and if you liked it and whether you're going to see the movie. And of course you can tell me which parts you're looking forward to in the movie and which parts you're kind of worried about. I'll see you guys soon, probably with a Hunger Games movie review. Doei!